Wow. Everybody must be busy. Uh, what I have, when I go out and do my videos when I'm not here, is I have two different things. I have a selfie stick. And this is for the phone. Um, also, <clears throat> I have a GoPro, GoPro 7. Uh, however, when I record on this, I can't record, uh, I can't upload because my laptop <clears throat> is now currently in the shop. If you saw my walking video the other day, uh, where I was walking up to the, uh, computer repair store, uh, which by the way, they were closed. Uh, when I was walking up there, uh, I, I did a video, but I used my selfie stick. And it's really pretty cool because it has an attachment that I can plug into the uh, earphone jack it's got a button. I press this button and it will take pictures. Um, if I hold it down, it'll take a lot of pictures. But my GoPro, I can't, I, you know, there's really nothing I can do until I get my laptop back from the uh, shop. Uh, it's going to cost me... It's going to cost me anywhere about 120 to 150 dollars, just depending. Uh, if it just needs a good cleaning, hello, sweetie Marie. If it just needs a good cleaning, then you know, of course, it's going to be a lot less. It'll be less than 100 dollars. But if it, if my laptop needs the new cooling fan for which is what the default is. Hi Kathleen, how are you? Um, if the, if my laptop needs a new uh, cooling fan, then it's gonna cost me about 120. And uh, just depending on the part, uh, it could run up to about 150 US dollars, which would also be about, oh, about 7,000 PHP. Hey Kathleen, are you staying safe? Kathleen, I used to work with her uh, back at Home Depot in a place called Georgetown. She's one of the sweetest ladies I know. And uh, and I haven't seen her, I guess, what, since 2011? Hello, Donna, how are you? Uh, but anyways, we're talking about my laptop. Uh, I, I, I did a cost estimate to find out whether or not it was cheaper to get it fixed than it is to buy a new one. Uh, to buy a new one would run about Oh, 20,000 uh, PHP or about $400. And so I had to do a cost comparison. If it was going to cost me more to get it fixed, then, you know, I would just uh, go and get a new laptop. But because the price, the cost is less, uh, you know, I went ahead and opted for this uh, get it repaired. So once I get that back, then I'll be able to do some uploads. Hey, Steve Wayne McKinney, how are you, bro? Um, then I'll be able to get my GoPro and do a lot more with it. You know, um, do I, I want to do once all this nonsense about lockdown is done, you know, I want to do a lot with my GoPro. Uh, but in the meantime, 
I still have this and this works really good but so how is everything going I'm doing well I am blessed I'm doing well and I hope everybody out there is doing well if you a shameless plug okay I have a YouTube channel and it's called Texpat, T-E-X-P-A-T, Robert Rice. And go check it out. I would like everyone on my Facebook to subscribe. I think that would be awesome. Yes, yeah, Steve, I'm doing really good, uh, actually. Um, I found out today that the, um, I caught the MERS virus, oh, about, oh, three years ago. And I found, you know, it's the Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome, MERS virus. SARS is South Asian uh, Respiratory Syndrome. You know what they are? It's the coronavirus. It's what this virus is that's going around. So basically, I've already caught it. Um, and I caught it about three years ago. But anyways, I'm not going to do on that today. Uh, I've said enough about it already. Everybody already knows my thoughts on it. Uh, but whatever you want to talk about, open up, open line segment. I know it's uh, late for people in the United States, but in the Philippines, it is it is daytime. If you go and check out my videos on, on my YouTube channel, um, Text Pat Robert Rice, you're going to see a lot in there. You know, a lot of stuff I've done. Filipino friends and family that they, you know, that they take the camera and then they go do do their thing with it. And it's really pretty cool. You get to actually see, you know, how things are there. A um, lot of... Uh, uh, things in the, in the province, not too much in the city, you know, things in the province. Uh, I'm expecting, uh, another video from Jim Boy to come in, uh, for him to bring and, and upload it. The rice field is doing awesome. Hi, Charlotte. How are you? Um, the rice fields are doing great. They are just bright green. They're doing great and probably ready to harvest within the next week or two. Uh, you know when it's ready to harvest when they start to turn brown, kind of like corn. When corn starts to turn brown, then's the time to harvest. And uh, so that should be ready to harvest. The, the corn field is right next to the river and so it's not so hard to irrigate it it's uh, it's really uh, really nice uh, to do that uh, I've looked at the corn I've looked at the cornfield and I'm thinking well you know perhaps if we can do a downslope in the furrows of about three maybe three degrees and if we can get a a pump a sump pump and pump up some of the water from the river to you know run down the furrows and don't have to do it all the time you know maybe once a week or so and because there hasn't been any rain so the what what you know, but I would have to talk to Arnell about that. You know, Arnell is, he's the boss of the, uh, of the fields. You know, that's quite a big responsibility, especially when you're a farmer. You know, that's your uh, livelihood. Um, 
the so but the but the crops look like they're doing good and hi Nita Nita Robles um, the crops are looking pretty good despite the lockdown where you can't basically do anything um, you can go out in your backyard oh and in the backyard there's sweet potatoes, ampelaya, I think eggplant, uh, some tomato. Uh, there's a, a pretty good garden in the backyard. So, and there's chickens and ducks. So if for some reason there is a complete total lockdown, there's still food. And ducks and chickens are replenishing. You just don't have to eat them all at once. Hi, Lucy Mar. Um, so, you know, it's just it's just a matter of waiting it out. I'm not too optimistic about all of this. I, I'm uh, I've already said in one of my um, videos that you know what I think is coming, and I don't. I'm not really optimistic about anything at this point. Uh, as far as this world and its politics are concerned. Um, but, as a child of God, I can, I can trust in the fact that I'm going to be all right. That God will provide all my needs according to his riches and glory. There's nothing to be afraid of I'm as calm as can be. Um, you know, and once once you get that understanding that you are in Christ, you're in his hands, right? You are in his hands. And Jesus Christ will not let anyone, 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 any demon, any fallen angel, anyone in this world take him, take you out of his hand. He will not let that happen. He will protect you and keep you. Now that doesn't mean you won't get sick, uh, you know, or you won't get imprisoned or you won't uh, even die for your faith, but you'll always be in his hand. That means you are secure in Christ Jesus. And I just want to thank God that through all of this weirdness that the world is just going through, that I just thank God for that calm and peace that I have, you know, because he's the only one that can give it. Um, Jesus said, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives unto you, I give unto you. Apostle Paul writes that it is the peace that passes all understanding. Hi, Amy. Oh my goodness. How are you? How's Rob? How's he enjoying his retirement? Is he, is he ready to get to work to do something else or is he going fishing? Um, the Apostle Paul writes, it is the peace that passes all understanding. And Isaiah writes, and his name shall be called the Prince of Peace. So if you are afraid and fear comes from, not from God, it comes from the devil himself. Because if you're afraid, guess what? You're impotent. You can't do anything. You, you, you want to either run and hide or you want to go and do something silly or something stupid. So fear does not come from God and we are not given a spirit of fear, but of power and of joy, of love and of a sound mind. So that sound mind means 
self-control. We're, we can, we're able to control our own selves. You know, and that's not so hard. Uh, hi, Joy. How are you? Yes. The Lord is nice. I'm going to tell you something. Jesus Christ is, is the joy of my salvation and it is the joy of your salvation. You know, it's a wonderful, wonderful, precious thing. And not only does he hold you secure in his hands, he also tells you, you know, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe in me. That's what he says. And he says, in my father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. And that we would go to where he is. That where I am, there you may be, you may be also. So we have an assurance that we will go to a city whose builder and maker is God. We belong to a country. We have a king. And we belong to a country that's not here on this earth. It will be here on this earth. but it's not here yet. Yes, Joy, you are absolutely correct. Uh, one thing I love about Filipinos, I want to tell you something. They will keep you on your toes, especially when it comes to scripture. They are the, I. you don't know how many times that I might misquote something or I might give a wrong scripture reference and bam, they sure let me have it. You know, hey, hey, bro, you know, this, this is, uh, this is the uh, scripture. You, you, you miss, either misquoted it or you gave the wrong scripture. So I love the Filipinos when it comes to scripture. It is absolutely wonderful. They know their Bibles. And so we can be rest assured that in this current situations that's going on in the world, this weirdness that's going on in the world, this panic-stricken fear uh, that has just gripped the world, that we have nothing to fear. Because Jesus Christ is within you. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is within you. And that if the kingdom of heaven is within you, there's nothing in this world that can remove it. That Shekinah glory of God is within you. And Jesus Christ sits upon the throne of your heart. What a wonderful thought. What a wonderful thought. That you just can't explain it. You, if I could explain what it means in the words that I know, I would tell you. I just can't explain it. And uh, because... It is beyond the height and the depth of anything that I can imagine. Come on, Joyce, give me the scripture. <laughs> oh, man. It's a wonderful day. It is a truly wonderful, marvelous day. And I am glad. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will. Rejoice and be glad in it. Every day is a blessing. Every day is new. Every day is something new and something different. There is nothing ever just the same. Hey, Debbie, how are you doing? It's already there, Joy. Um... She says, please kindly pray for us here in the Philippines that the coronavirus will come 
uh, will come out. I think she means to leave the country. Uh, let me tell you something. In Batangas, I, I saw a, a friend of mine sent a article that a hundred of the first line caregivers have tested positive for the coronavirus. And let me tell you something. You're going to catch that coronavirus. You're going to catch it. There's no ands, ifs, or buts. Uh, these frontline people are wearing gloves, masks, face goggles, uh, hair covered. They're wearing gowns, protective gowns. They're wearing booties on their feet. I mean, they go through the decontamination process and they've been doing this and they still caught it. The corona, just to be sure, and I don't, don't want to talk about the coronavirus because I've said enough of about it. Go back and watch my other videos. Go see them on YouTube. Uh, text Pat Robert Rice. Joy, let me tell you something. If you're a child of God, you have nothing to fear. And anybody else who is a child of God has nothing to fear. God will protect you even if you do catch it. God will protect you. And you can do some things that will help yourself. Uh, if you live in the province, uh, you have a little more freedom of movement. Especially if you live a little bit of ways, you know, from the Barangay uh, Hall. Um, you can go into the jungle and you can get lemoncito, mangoes, uh, bananas for potassium, um, and wild fruit like that. If you have money, you can buy lemoncito, you can buy um, oranges, apples, um, lemons, limes, anything like that. Those are high in vitamin C and you can either... Put a little salt on it and suck suck on them, you know, which are really sour, I know, but trust me, it works. Or you can squeeze them into, into a pitcher and make uh, lemonade or lemon water. Hello, Nell. Um, but you can do that. But I don't want to talk about coronavirus tonight. I, I, I understand, Joy, how much you... You're probably worried about it, but worry is not of God. It, you know, there's no, if you're a child of God, worry more about your unsaved relatives and your unsaved friends. Okay, those are the ones that need to be prayed for and talked to. I want to say uh, some really good news today. I have a new subscriber on my on my uh, YouTube. And um, she has a lot of interesting videos. Uh, but she sent me a message. And she asked me, uh, she said, first she said, you know, she must not have watched too many of my videos because she wouldn't have asked this question. She said, are you a Christian? And then she said, I used to be a member of the United Pentecostal Church until I went to China. And she's, and she's been back for a long time, so she wasn't one of those Wuhan people. Uh, and she said, um, I, used to be a, I used to be a member of the United Pentecostal Church. Hello, Bang Bang. Uh, and, and she asked me if I was a Christian, and I said, yes, I am, I am also UPC. And, you know, she never replied me back, but there is an opportunity because I have some really good videos, Bible study videos, uh, that is really good on there and a lot of preaching. I got a lot of them from the Philippines, uh, some in uh, Tagalog, others in Ilocano, uh, even, even got myself over there preaching. So here's the thing. You never know with what you do, how it's going to draw someone back 
to Jesus Christ, who's who might have been like the like the lamb that was lost. Where the shepherd goes and brings back his lost sheep. Well, there are a lot of them that for whatever reason have lost their way. They didn't intend on it. That's, they didn't ask to go walk away. They're not the prodigal son. It's just that they, they just kind of walked out. And they, they, and they have no idea why or how. Uh, the word of God, you know, if they hear it, um, will start to pull upon the strings of their heart and bring them back. And that's the important thing, you know. My purpose when I started my YouTube channel was specifically just going to be Bible study, preaching, and teaching. That's exactly what I started it for. And over time, then I went about a year where I didn't produce any videos, excuse me, at all. And that was because I was really busy at work you know, at the time, and, and I just could not uh, find the time to make these videos. But now that things have changed a little bit, and I can go back to doing videos again, we don't know what will cause or how God is working upon the heart of another. That's why we can't judge anybody. Because God is always singing his love song to people. He's always telling them, come, come to me or come home. And so we can't judge people, you know, for how they are or where they are. We can't judge them for what they've done. It's not our place to judge. We are not judges. We are. We will not be a judge until the white throne judgment. So, even Jesus said, "Know you not that you shall judge angels?" Or, or I'm sorry, the Apostle Paul. Uh, that. We will be sitting in judgment of the angels. Those are the fallen angels. So the things that, you know, we have to consider is if we got to treat people with love and not a worldly love, a godly love, we have to treat them with love. Love conquers everything. I mean, it was God's love that conquered your heart. You know, love covers a multitude of sins. Love is not jealous. No, it doesn't seek its own. It's not selfish. Uh, Joy says we are governed by man. Possibilities we are infected, right? <sighs> well, not necessarily. You, you, because we are of the sons and daughters of Adam by the flesh, we have already infected with the sin problem. And that's why Jesus Christ came. But it doesn't mean that you're infected with you know, for example, the coronavirus. That virus was started in China, just like the Middle Eastern uh, Respiratory Syndrome and the South Asian Respiratory Syndrome, the MERS and the SARS. You know, our bodies have fought off infections since we were babies. 
and for thousands of years, our bodies have fought off infections. So we don't need to consider that this is hopeless. And I say again, joy, trust in Jesus Christ. Trust in him. If you, if, let me, t this is to everybody. If you are worried about the state of affairs that's going on in this world right now, put your worry on the altar. Cast your care upon him, for he careth for you. Cast your care upon Jesus Christ because he first cared for you. That's the best thing you can do because worry and fear and all these other things are like a huge weight that we have to carry on our shoulders. And I, I want to tell you something. That is a weight we don't need to carry. Worry and fear will make you ineffective. In fact, worry and fear is the devil's tool to get you to be ineffective. Then that's what I'm trying to tell you. Worry and fear will make you ineffective for God. And is, an, and is a weapon the devil will use against us. Because if he knows that we're worried and if we fear, then there's nothing, we can't do anything for God. Well, what about this? Well, what about, what about finances? What about this? What about that? You know, what, what, what happens if this happens? Who cares? Just care for what God wants you to do. That's the only thing that we need to think about. What does he want us to do? He wants us to go out and preach and teach. He wants us to go out and evangelize. He wants us to reach out into areas where uh, the gospel has not been reached. I want to tell you something. The Philippines is ripe for a huge revival. Asia is ripe for a huge revival. The Chinese, they're looking at this and they're saying, well, the government didn't stop it. This didn't, it happened on this government's watch. So the government, they're looking for something else because they are taught that the almighty government is, is going to take care of them. They are taught that, you know, they are above the reproach of other men because they are Chinese. And, and, and that's the truth. I know Chinese people that are here in the United States. I know what... They, t they, they talk to me about what it is that the government there teaches in their government schools. So the, the China, all of Southeast Asia, uh, the Philippines, I want to tell you something. There is such, all it takes is going to be one person, one person, who's going to be bold enough to go out and preach, to go out and teach the scriptures, the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why is it the good news? What, what makes the gospel good news? This, during this time, in times like now, that the opening and the spread of the gospel can be given 
And it's up to each and every one of us. You know what? You can't take them to church now because they don't want any gatherings. This world is afraid. This world is scared to death because they were told that they have to be scared to death. They were told that this thing is is something to be so afraid of. This world is afraid. This world is scared. And they need someone who's going to stand in the gap and say, stop. We have something here that's going to, to assure you that you're going to be all right. This is the time now to get out of the box we call a church. To get out and give the gospel. It used to be called oikos evangelism. Oikos is a Greek word. It means personal. Personal evangelism. One on one. You go out and you teach. You go out and you preach. You go out and you give Bible study. It's really not that hard. You've got to get over your fear of talking to people. Now is the time. While the world is in chaos. Hi, Diane. Now is the time. While the world is in chaos chaos and disarray and afraid and frightened and they need something to hold on to and you've got the thing that the world needs and that's called Jesus Christ. It's called the Holy Ghost. You've got to hold on to, you've got something to hold on to and now you have the opportunity to give and to bring forth something they can hold on to. Yes, no, I'm doing fine. I'm doing real fine. Uh, you just have to understand, I get excited about the possibilities of what you can do in Jesus Christ. You know, that is the thing. It's up to each, it's not up to the pastor anymore. The pastor can't preach to you anymore. He can't teach to you anymore. Not in a church setting. So it's up to each and every person in your church to go out and say, we will carry the gospel. Blessed, uh, what, what is this scripture? Uh, Blessed are those who, ah, it's in Romans. Blessed are the feet of those who carry the gospel. Um, Romans. Always have your Bible. And I don't have my glasses. <laughs> oh, let's see. Do, 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 do.
and see it. That's what I get for breaking my glasses. Ah, Romans 10. I can't even read. My eyes are so bad. But anyway, paraphrased. Blessed are the feet of those who carry the gospel of peace. Um... It's on us and it's part of the armor of God. Believe it or not, your feet are part of the armor of God and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So we need to be prepared to give an answer, to give an answer We need to be prepared to give an answer and we need to be prepared to bring the scriptures, your feet prepared, shod or put or like shoes put on with the gospel of peace. Our feet have to carry us and we have to be, you have to wear, you have to wear it. You know, we got the helmet of salvation we got the sword of the spirit. We talk about that all the time. We've got the shield of faith and the breastplate of righteousness and our loins gird about with the, with the truth. But you got to have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace because it's your feet that will walk down the street and share the gospel with someone else. It's up to each and every one of us now. You can't just rely on a preacher to preach a sermon and hope that they go to the altar. Now, the altar is wherever your knees are at, wherever their knees go, wherever they start to repent. Wherever there's water, is there a river nearby? Go and baptize them. Or call for the pastor to go baptize them. You know, some, some uh, churches are a little more lenient, you know, as far as allowing their members to baptize. Um, I know in the United Pentecostal Church, you have to have what they want you to have a Christian worker's license. Uh, that allows you to baptize, officially allows you. But in today's world, where all this weirdness is going on, where people are so scared and they're, whole, they're grasping for something to reach out and hold on to, it's going to be you. It's going to be you. You're going to be that Simon the Tanner that baptized Paul. It's going to be you. And who knows, you may be baptizing the next great evangelist to come around. 
the one that will take Asia into one of the most greatest revivals since, since the Azusa Street Revival. Since that outpouring of the Holy Ghost back in the early 1900s. It's going to be you. And it is up to each and every one of us. It's not just up to the pastor anymore. It's not just up to the, uh, those that do altar service. It's not just up to the, the singers anymore. It's up to you and it's up to me. It was for this cause we were saved. It is for this reason we were saved. Not to hand over the, the reins to someone else to do. But it's for this reason we were saved. For just a time as this. That we were born of the Spirit for just a time as this. I love you all and I need you to get down on your hands and your knees. Put your face to the ground. And rise up and, and, and in prayer, rise up and carry the gospel to someone else. If every single apostolic Pentecostal individual would just do that, And then if you, if you are rejected by that person, that's okay. It really is. Jesus said there would be rejection. And if they rejected you and they didn't invite you uh, to speak with them and, 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 you know, and they told you to go away, well, guess what? Shake the dust off your feet at, toward them as a testimony against them. And you move on to the next person. But think about this. They may have reject now, but you planted a seed within them. And God brings forth the increase. You water it with prayer and God brings forth the increase. This is such a great time right now. This is the perfect time right now because the, the day is coming when we're not going to be able to work. The day is coming when we're not going to be able to work. And that's going to be a dark time. In fact, uh, it's going to be a time of Christians are going to be fleeing. And it's going to be a bad time. We're not gone yet. And we're watching the new world order come into being. Yes, I am UPC. Yes, Joy. So here's the gospel in a nutshell. Jesus died for our sins on a cross, just as the scripture has said. He was buried and was in the earth for three days. On the third day, he rose again. So how does that affect us? 
Well, it's really quite simple. We have to die, we have to be buried, and we have to rise again. And you say, how can that be? How can we die and be buried and then rise again? We have to die to ourselves. We have to die to our old ways of doing things. We have to die to our nature, our own nature. We call it the flesh. We have to die to it. And we do that in repentance. Repentance is, means to turn. We have to turn away from our sins. We have to turn away from those things that uh, drive us away from God. We have to turn away and never go back to again. It's like you're walking in one direction and you turn and now you're walking in the other direction. You were first walking away from God and now you're walking toward God. And if you take one step to God, he's going to take one step to you. He's going to take two, two steps to you. We have to die and that's called repentance. And repentance is, is more than just crying. It's more than just weeping. Repentance is resolve. I'm not going back to that again. I'm not going back to that. I didn't like where I was at and I'm not going to go back. I was a drug addict and I'm not going back to the drugs. I was an alcoholic and I'm not going back to that again. I, I was someone who always chased after women. Well, guess what? I'm not going back to that because it was like a drug that filled me uh, and, and, and it went away. The feeling just kept going away. And so I had to keep going back to it. I'm not going back to that again. I'm resolving, Lord, I'm resolving right now. I'm not going back to that. That's repentance. The second part, Jesus was buried. And we emulate the gospel, the death, the burial, and the resurrection. We emulate it. Once we die to ourselves and we resolve in repentance that we don't want to do this anymore, we have to be buried. And we do that by baptism. And that's in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And that, that command was given in Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Thank you, Joy. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Everyone in the book of Acts that was baptized was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of their sins. I didn't make it up. I didn't put it there. It's what's there. So what's there is what I have to go by. These are the examples of the first century, the very first Christians. And this is what they did. It was the acts of the apostles. It was the apostles' actions. We have to die that when we know ye not that you were buried in Christ, Paul says in Romans, that we were buried with him in baptism. And Peter writes, he says that the, the world that was before, speaking the world of Noah before the flood, that they were baptized, that the waters that covered the flood, the world was like a baptism. 
where Paul in Corinthians chapter 10 says that they were all baptized into the Red Sea with Moses. There's something about baptism. There's something about the name. For there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. No other name. There's no other name that every knee shall bow in heaven, in earth, and things under the earth will bow down. There's no other name but the name of Jesus Christ. There's power in the name. It's not in the water. It's in the name. We put on the name of Jesus Christ when we get baptized unto him and his and in baptism. Here's something else. When the Israelites, before they crossed the Red Sea, They were all gathered together. Pharaoh's army was almost upon them. God had put his fire down there to keep the Pharaoh's army from coming. And he told Moses to go and, and uh, stand up before the Red Sea. And Moses said to the people of Israel, the children of Israel, he said, he said, behold, the salvation of the Lord. You will not see the Israelites from this, or you will not see the Egyptians from this day forth. And God sent a wind. <laughs> God sent a wind. And the Red Seas throughout the night parted and the ground was dry. And they crossed through the Red Sea, a type of baptism. And the what, what you gotta sit here, see is just right here. When they got to the other side, God removed that fire that separated Pharaoh and Pharaoh's army from the Israelites and the army came rushing into the Red Sea. And while they were in there, God pulled the, the wheels off the chariots and, and stopped the chariots and the waters came crashing down on that army. Pharaoh is a type of Satan. Egypt is a type of the world. And Pharaoh could not go through the waters. The devil cannot, once you've gone through the water, the devil cannot go through that water to get you. So we are repented of our sins. We are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of our sins. We are, we die and we are buried. What's left? Jesus rose from the dead. What's left is the breath of God that comes into you. It is the Holy Ghost. It is that which gives you the power. It is that which gives you the power to move on, to go on. It is that which gives you the power to say no to sin. It is that which gives you the power to do mighty things in the Lord. It is that which gives you the power to speak for him because you are now an ambassador for him to this world. The Holy Ghost 
creates a new creature out of something that was dead and buried. And you rise again as new creatures in Christ. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. And you say, well, preacher, how, how, how does it happen? Well, look at the book of Acts. The book of Acts is our shining example of New Testament salvation. It is our shining example of New Testament salvation. Look at Acts chapter 2. When the Holy Ghost came down, they were all in one place and in one accord. And there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the house where they were sitting. And cloven tongues of fire sat upon each of them. And they all began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. I didn't make that up. It's written, it's written in here. It's written in here. Acts chapter 2. It is the wind of God. It is the breath of God. It is that breath of God that gave Adam life. It is the breath of God that will give you life. And cause you to rise up as a new creature in Christ. Old things, those old things are gone. Those things that we've done before are gone. They're in the past. As far as God's concerned, they're done. They're in the sea of forgetfulness. They're forgotten about. Now the world doesn't care about it. The world will always try to remind you of what you used to do. And remember, the key word is used to do. That's past tense. That's not what you do now. So who cares what they say about me? Who cares what they say about you? Who cares? That's gone. That's a way. That's history. It's now. It's now. This is how I'm walking now. Don't look at the world. Don't look at the winds and the waves as the apostles did that were on the boat and they were frightened. They were, on the, they were on the Sea of Galilee. The wind was howling. The waves were crashing. They thought they were gonna sink. And here comes Jesus walking on the water toward them. Peter says, Lord, let me, if that's you, let me run out there. Peter, and, and Jesus says, well, come on. Hello, Malo. Peter says, come on. I mean, Jesus says, come on. Peter just gets up, walks out. He's walking on water. But somewhere between him and Jesus, he starts to look around. He gets his focus off God. And he sees the winds and he sees the waves and he begins to sink back down into the water to the point where he has to cry out, Lord. And Jesus takes him by the hand and pulls him up. And then the next step, he's back on the boat. If we're watching the world, if we're watching the fear, if we're watching the, the panic, if we're watching the chaos, our focus is off of Jesus Christ. And our focus needs to be on Jesus Christ through this. 
It is up to us to now be able to carry the gospel. It is up to us. You can't go to church anymore. You can't have a preacher preach it anymore. You can't have a song service that, and everybody goes to the altar anymore. So it's up to each and every one of us to have our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace and take it. Take it. It's up to us now. And I've been talking about this for a long time now. We got to get out of the box we call a church building and we have to make church where we take the gospel. And the world is ready to grab a hold of something because they are scared to death. They don't know what to do. They don't know where to go. They don't know who to listen to. They're hearing scary, scary things. The economy of the world is hanging in the balance. Mm -hmm. People are losing their jobs. Millions are on the verge of starvation. And what do we need to do? We need to bring them the gospel. And you say, well, what good does that do if you don't have any food? God will provide. He will provide with all the riches and glory to get the gospel across. He will help you to meet their needs. Yes, you got to meet their physical needs as much as you can. It's not just in word, it's in action also. Now is the time. Today is the day. Because tomorrow may not come. And all these people who have never heard the gospel, What are you going to say to them when they stand before Jesus Christ at the great white throne judgment? What are you going to say? When they look at you and said, you walked right by me and you never, never, never said anything. What are you going to tell them? Mm. You're going to tell them that, oh, uh, uh, I'm so sorry. Uh, what is the Lord going to think? What is the Lord going to say? He's going to say... Brother so-and-so, sister so-and-so, what happened? Why didn't you stop for just one moment? And I could have planted a seed in that man, in that woman, in that child. Now is the time. Today is the day. Get off of your couches, get off of your chairs, get off. Get out of your house if you can. Get on your cell phones and start calling people. Hey, today is the day. Look what the Lord has done for me. This is the way I was before, this is how I am now. And if you're here watching this, and if you're listening to it, if you have been negligent in giving the gospel to someone, and they died in their sins because you did not come to them,
that get on your knees now and ask the Lord to forgive you for not following his command to go to the highways and the byways and compel them to come in. Get on your knees now. Now is the time. The perfect time is right now while the world is afraid. Give them hope. Give them hope. The world needs what we have. We cannot withhold it from anyone for any reason. It doesn't matter how rude they are. It doesn't matter what their job is. You know, if they're a prostitute or whatever, if they're a bartender, it doesn't matter. Because Jesus Christ loves them just as much. And who are you? Who am I to withhold the gospel from them? Think about this. If you can, go to the graveyard and find a gravestone and tell that person in the ground, I'm sorry, I wasn't here in time to tell you. I wasn't here in time to give you the gospel. Can you do that? Is this gospel so important to you that you have to hold it to yourself and you can't give it to someone else? Especially when the world needs it now. You can't hold it unto yourself. You have to give it away. And you keep giving it away. And you keep giving it away. And you keep giving it away. I'm going to end this video now. Because it's important that each one of us take an assessment of our own selves of our own selfishnesses, of our own lack of following through with Jesus' command. That everyone listening to the sound of my voice will get down on their knees. And if you're a child of God and you have not done what he's wanted you to do, that you ask him to forgive you for your own negligence. And then go out and do what he says to do. If you are not a child of God, if this is the first time you've ever heard this, get on your knees and ask God to forgive you right where you're at. Get on your knees, it's okay. and turn away from those things you are doing that separate you from God. And don't go back to them. And get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Because this promise, the promise of this new life, the promise of being able to rise up as a new creature in Christ where old things are passed away, all things have become new. This promise, this promise of God is for you. 
It's for your children. It's for all those who are afar off. Whatever country they're in. Wherever they are. Whether they're on the streets, in the hospitals, in the nursing homes. Whether they're working a job, whether they're not working a job. This promise is to those that are far off. Wherever they are. as many as the Lord our God shall call. We can't hold it back from people because we're shy. You have to get rid of your shyness. And right now, the world needs us to bring them hope and peace where they'll no longer have to be afraid. They'll no longer have to be scared. They'll no longer have to panic. They'll no longer have to trust in the things that is not going to help them. Get on your knees today and bow before the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. And let's get out and start doing his work. In Jesus' name, amen.